Hey guys and welcome back to the newly formed Antara Wildlife Park built for our Eurasia download content pack that has just released. Today we're going into a smallish build. We're going to set up our pond, get our swans put in. We've also got some red deer ahead of us. Before we jump on into that though, if like me you think the swan is the best animal in this entire pack, hit the like button below. Or if you're on the other side of the fence and you think they're out to kill everybody that goes near them, then also hit the like button for the sake of engagement. Now let's jump on in and see how we begin turning our country park into a wildlife park. So where we left things last episode, you may remember, we had just set it up so that our visitors could access all areas of the park, got all of our paths and countryside in, and now we're going to go back over everything and start adding in a load of fences. Now that's largely why today's video is quite a short one, because the swans don't really need that many fences. Now to start, we're going to build ourselves a little low-level chain link fence, as you can see here. We're just going to use a couple of little landed ones just to create a couple of brackets and make it look a little bit more realistic. Now it was at this point I was still of a big hope that we could actually mix the deer, the wisent, the boar and the swans all into one big habitat. Um, and that was working really well until we tried to make, as you'll see later on in the speed build, a through path underneath the bridge where our deer then obsessed with trying to drown themselves. Uh, unfortunately I could never actually fix that and we'll jump onto that when we get to that section. For now though we're just making this little barrier just to keep them in off the path to stop them wandering off into the car park. I did consider making it a complete walkthrough habitat however again I couldn't find a way of getting the barriers to work that meant that the swans didn't end up pretty much everywhere within the zoo. So here we go, we're going to sink this into the ground and despite this being about two meters high, they still manage in places to get over the top of it. We do sort that out later on with a couple of extra rocks and a couple of hidden barriers. But for now, it's working quite well once we've got it all leveled up. So I'm just going to run this all the way along the front of the path. I suppose you could argue it also stops kids falling into the pond and all of that other irresponsible parenting that should be stopping it anyway. Then I found, once uh, starting to look at the traversable area, that we couldn't get underneath the bridge, so I pretty much had to rebuild the entire bridge. And I've left this bit in just to prove that the path system is a pain, no matter how experienced you are at Planet Zoo. As you can see here, we're going to make our bridge. Oh, and let's join it up. And yeah, yeah, that, that, that was where I ended up. So I went back, redid it. As you can see there, we've just raised it slightly. Here's the bit I was referring to. So the idea was we we're going to have this little wooden walkway and we made that out of some painted timber, some logs, and then we used some hinges to bolt it into the logs. And it's going to be this sort of smallish walkway that only the swans were big enough to get down. And the idea was that they could go from the bigger habitat with the wizen and the boar and the deer, go down here under the bridge into the pond area. Quick segue away from that story. In fact, while I was building, I noticed we now have a melanistic fallow deer and she's awesome. I've never seen one before in any of the zoos I've made previously, certainly not where they go this dark brown color. So I thought I'd throw her in. And also while I was there, I noticed that for whatever reason, since our last episode, the keepers could no longer cross this water. Now bear in mind, I hadn't touched anything. So I'm not actually entirely sure why uh, it suddenly stopped. But instead of moaning and trying to fix it, which was what I kind of did for about half an hour, I then built this little walkway, hid it with some plants, and we'll tart all that back up later on with the next episode in the Wizent enclosure. So yes, back to my tale of woe. Uh, so as you can see here, it was at this point I was popping down all these enrichment items, I was going to hide this uh, foraging pool, and the idea was by filling this side of the pond with all of the swans' uh, habitat items and enrichments, they would come over here, but also then go back to the other side to feed. Um, two big problems were hit. First things first, the keepers, because there was no gate on this side of the path, could not get over here to fill up the enrichment items. Secondly, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, gangway that we just made, the deer couldn't use, it was still too small, but for whatever reason it convinced them that they could jump off the side of the river, down into the lower portion, and then could not get back out. So I ended up with, and it was only over the babies, the, the parents were fine, they never tried to jump off. But the baby deer, let's just say they seemed to enjoy jumping down and seeing what would happen. 
So essentially what I ended up doing was going back and removing that, separating the two habitats into separate areas. We pop a small gate down into this one and unfortunately it does mean that our swans are kind of relegated over to this side. I did keep the lower half of the river within the swan habitat. So you'll see in the cinematics, I've sort of put down a couple of water jets uh, up underneath the waterfall as well as sort of decorated up that part of the river. And they do use it and they do go back there. Um, but it's, it's just a shame. I really had a, a great idea of them sort of mixing the habitat. Now keep an eye out for maybe either next episode or the episode after where we are still going to mix the two sides of the pathway into one big habitat. Uh, it just won't involve the swans, unfortunately. So in case you've not been keeping up with what's been going on the screen, I've sort of started to plant out the pond area. Now we did a lot of that when we first built the pond in our preparing series. And if you've not seen that, it's linked just up above. But part of the, I guess, speed builds for each of our um, habitat enclosures is going to be areas that we've improved and where we go back and just sort of add that extra bit of detail, especially now I'm not racing to get one out every day. Oh, and another little diversion. While I was putting down those plants, I got the notification of our first set of babies and oh my God, look at them. They are fluffy. I want them. They are literally the cutest babies in Planet Zoo right now. Prove me wrong. I, I level the challenge to anybody to prove me wrong and explain what baby is cuter in Planet Zoo. Let me know in the comments below. But right now it's going to be the goslings. I mean, they are amazing. Now, if like me, you've grown up around swans, you'll know full well they don't care about hard shelter. So we are kind of ignoring that a little bit. And instead, we're just going to create little secluded areas. But then once I did all that, I noticed there was a little bit of a lack of colour. So what I then went back in, in this sort of later detailing stage, is added a load of these foxglove plants and a couple of flowers, just to add those little pops of colour. And then we also went back with a load of different dry grasses. Um, and it's a little bit more of a bigger palette. Obviously, when we built the map, we kept it to that sort of European temperate palette. Um, instead, I thought, let's add some other colours in just to make it look good. Uh, we are using a little bit of elephant grass. If you've not used elephant grass before, just be aware it is essentially the concrete wall of Planet Zoo. Anywhere you then end up putting it, it will stop absolutely everything getting through. So use it very sparingly. Now, the new Eurasia pack also came with these new hostas, I think they're called. Um, one set of plants, that's all it is, but they have this lovely variegation of colour on them and uh, they're, they're actually really, really nice and I can see them going into my regular used palette very easily. Finishing off now with just a couple more weeds, the idea would be obviously because it's a wildlife park, it's not going to be mown, it's not going to be cleaned, it's not going to be tidied, it's just going to be left to grow, kept in check off the paths, but everywhere else would just be left to grow kind of wild. And then finally, just to add a little bit of colour, I bought in some of that blue sedge from uh, the earlier map making that we were using, just about these little pops of purple, which I think contrasts really well with the green. Right, that's us all done for now. Let's jump on in to some cinematics. And with the gates opening for Antara Park, I am really happy with how this habitat turned out. It's only a short video today, so I'm going to mix in a couple of our deer herd who has grown and bred exponentially since we last spoke. I have also, in anticipation of our next episode, brought in some red deer as well. So you'll probably see them bounding around in the back. There's a few there just eating. And I will also leave you with some lovely cinematics of our wonderful goslings. Thank you for joining me again today, guys. And thank you for the support so far. The channel has absolutely jumped up in the last week or two. And I am so happy with it all. Keep popping your feedback down in the comments below. I read absolutely every single one of them and really happy to receive it. If you enjoyed the episode today, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more Planet Zoo and other tycoon content coming soon. See you next time, guys.